Welcome back. It's November 1st, starting to make that hard turn toward colder weather, right? But that does mean you have to give up on having garden fresh food year round that you grow yourself. You can have your very own little herb garden right in your kitchen or some other part of your house. Joining us now is Bill Harris from Acer Gardens in Deep River, Connecticut. He's going to show us how to get your herb garden together. Bill, nice to have you here. As I was telling you coming into it, I'm a blank slate on this. I don't know so much about this, so. It's your show. Take it away. Where do we begin this conversation? All right. Well, thank you. Um, well, we're going into the holidays. Um, everybody's be cooking a lot in the kitchens. We've got um, several different holidays coming up. A lot of people just have to, when, when the cold weather comes, they just figure like that's over now and we'll have to wait Well, we can bring weather, the herbs inside. You can bring them we inside. We can bring them inside. You can actually purchase them in small pots or dig them up from your garden. We have different examples. Actually, each one of these were either dug up from our garden in the nursery or replanted uh, from pots in the nursery, such as this here. And you can put several in an ornamental container so that as you're cutting one herb back, another one's growing, so you just don't cut one all the way to the ground and there's nothing left. Give us some names here. What herbs are we having? So we have um, two different types of thyme. We have a, uh, a, a silver leaf thyme right here mm -hmm. and a regular uh, common thyme. Um, we have some, actually I gotta look because Oregano and marjoram look really close to one another. We have oregano <laughs> right here, and you can see we put some pansies in it. That would look nice through the winter. And as long as you can keep these herbs in a sunny spot right. where it's cool, not exceptionally hot with a lot of drafts, and you're keeping them from moist to dry, never Wet, never uh, moist to wet because they'll rot right, right within yeah, the pots. Yeah, you make that very clear that don't don't immerse these things in water. It's just not the need is not there. Yeah, you don't want to overwater them. But as we go across, I mean, we have things that you use in everyday cooking. We have cilantro. We have bay leaf for soups. Um, we have sage. We have mints over here. Rosemary. Rosemary is incredible. I mean, you have two of these plants, this will last you an entire winter. What are the kinds of things you have to do as far as fertilizing and feeding these? Fertilizing and feeding is really quite simple. If you're potting them up yourself, you want to try to add a little slow-release fertilizer, maybe a tablespoon into a pot this big while you're mixing it with some well-drained soil. I'll tell you what, let's do. While you talk, why don't we clear a little path here and you give All us right. a kind of a potting uh, uh, run-through, so to Perfect. speak. Perfect. Yeah. So you take your plant out. This is a cilantro. And you sort of squeeze the pot, and it will. And this is the same pots that we had here. And you can see being grown in the nursery, you start to get these circling roots. Absolutely, you go right in there. You tear into it. If you don't do this, the plant won't root out correctly. Right. You need to get, sort of so get you're it, let it breathe there. a little bit, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And then when you're planting it, plant it maybe in half an inch to an inch down from the lip of the pot. Mm -hmm. Add your potting soil, and while you're adding your potting soil, just mix in a small amount of slow-release fertilizer. Mix it throughout the potting soil. Mix it itself. throughout the potting soil. And then as you're going along, use a liquid feed maybe. You really don't feed that much, maybe once or twice a month. So you're only talking maybe doing it three to six times during the winter. How do you know when it's ready to harvest, shall we say, and use ready for, to for your dinner table? Immediately. Meaning what? Immediately. As soon as it's At like this, point, this or like as this? You could start cutting like this. Though, if you take the whole plant down to nothing, you have to re wait for it to regrow. So that's why you, why you might do something like this where there's three plants. You cut one down or cut a portion of one down while the others are growing. And then while this is taking a rest, you can cut the others. You can sort of work your way around in a circle between the three of them. So in other words, when it looks like it's ready, it's ready. It is absolutely ready to use at any time. All right. We, we, we have some uh, reminders here, Bill. Let's, uh, let's sum up a little bit about what we talked about here. Talk us through these, uh, these uh, uh, what you see here. Of the here, points there... here. Well, um, in summary, you want to really be careful not to overwater your plants. If you overwater them, they'll start to rot. They'll look like they're drying out but they're actually, the roots can't pick up the moisture anymore. And use the herbs as often as possible. Try to cut the plants back so that what you're doing is you're making the plants healthy, you're making them bushy, mm -hmm. and you're actually preventing them from flowering. As soon as they flower, they stop growing. When you say a cool, sunny place, that almost means it's gotta be near a window, can't be down in the basement, has sunlight but the right temperature. That's going to be a challenge for some people, so you just got to figure out what's best. It might be. If you don't have it in the right spot, I mean, you'll know immediately. The, pl the plants will start to yellow. They won't be growing as vigorously. And they won't taste as good. 
and they may not taste as good. That's right. true. I consider myself educated right now, so you have done your job. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank from, you. Uh, from, uh, from Acer, uh, been around for 32 years, and certainly the people in the community know you very well. I hope they come in and, uh, and visit you and learn a little about, uh, about this themselves. Thank you. Thank you very much.